Good afternoon. Welcome to the Clark County or Las Vegas or Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm I'm the vice chair. The chair, Commissioner McCurdy, is not available today, so he asked me to to sit in as chair. So bear with me as far as the procedures. I'm not used to it over here, but I'll, we'll figure it out. You're going to do just fine. We yeah. got you. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. So uh, I guess we'll start with a. Do we do a prayer or do we do a... Yes, the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Yeah. Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. And a prayer. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyone, anyone do the prayer? No, we, we just start with the pledge. Oh, pledge, okay. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, should I start with the public comment? Well, actually, Commissioner, you can do roll call. Okay, roll call. Yeah. And Jessica will take care of that. Okay. Chairperson William McCurdy. Vice Chairperson Tig Sagerbloom. Here. Commissioner Larry Blackman. Here. Commissioner Marissa Brown. Present. Commissioner Nancy Bruni. Commissioner Nancy Bruni. <laughs> Commissioner Carrie Cox. <laughs> Commissioner Richard Turchio. Yeah. Commissioner Michael Disman. <coughs> Commissioner Michael Disman. I think we're we're muted on all the people online because I think Nancy tried to yeah. to uh, say she was here. Okay, for the record, Commissioner Disman is online, and Commissioner Lachana Turner. Present. Thank you. A quorum is present, and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. I'm sorry, this is Nancy. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. For the record, Commissioner Nancy Bruni is present. A quorum is present, and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Okay, not to qual quibble, but who's caller number two? Okay, okay. All right. So we have a quorum. Um, so let's go ahead and have public comment. This is the first period for public comment. Anyone wishing to speak on an item on the agenda can come forward and speak. You have to identify the item, uh, state your name, and spell your last name for the record. Seeing no one, we'll close the first period of public comment and turn it over to, um, well, actually, we're going to ask for a approval of the minutes. All right, we turn it over to you now, Mr. Jordan. Or do the approval of the minutes. Okay. All right. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve. Okay. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. 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 Motions first and second. second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. All right. That motion passes. All right. There's a approval of the agenda. Um, so does anyone want to make a motion on the agenda? Mr. Churchill? I'll make a motion. Okay. Okay. Second. Second. All right, there's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now I think we can move on to Mr. Jordan. Aye. <laughs> oh, thank you. Getting ahead of myself here. That's okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, all. <laughs> um, in my executive director's report, my first item, I have the pleasure of, a di of uh, introducing our newest commissioner, Commissioner Larry Blackman. Uh, Mr. Blackman holds a bachelor's degree in history from Kent State University and has an extensive background as manager for GlaxoSmithKline ODS Limo Service and vice president of uh, Las Vegas Charter Tours. He's compassionate about contributing to his community in, in his new role as a commissioner. He hopes to improve communications between residents and management and contribute to the idea to addressing uh, affordable housing challenges within our community. Mr. Blackman has been an advocate for affordable housing and was the project manager on a development project in North Las Vegas in collaboration with his church, Holy Trinity AME. Mr. Blackman is also affiliated with the, follow, affiliated with the follow, following organizations. The American Heart Association, National Advocate, 100 Black Men of America, My Brother's Keeper, for he's the former chair of the Urban League here in Las Vegas. Please join me in welcoming our newest commissioner, Mr. Larry Blackman, to the board. 
Thank you. Mr. Blackman, do you want to make a few comments? I'm just here to learn. Just push, push the button there. I'm learning, so I'm going to be quiet. But thank you. Obviously very smart. <laughs> it's good to have you, Commissioner. Th thank you so much. Thank you. Um, my next item, June, I'd like to have June um, come up and, and speak to our next item. We have an em employee who's retiring. And maybe June and the employee can come up and we can acknowledge Jesus. Okay, okay, Amber's going to join as well. Why don't you guys identify yourselves and we'll make the presentation. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is June Fleming. I'm the human resources manager. Good afternoon. This is Amber Baltzley, Deputy Director of Operations for Public Housing. Good afternoon, Casey, Asset Manager, Scattered Sites. Good afternoon, Daniel Avila, Maintenance Supervisor, Scattered Sites. Good morning, Jesus R. Belaustegui, Jr., uh, Maintenance Worker. Also known as Chachi. Yes. <laughs> So that's Chachi. <laughs> it takes a village to make an employee. So Chachi Village is the deputy director of operations, his asset manager who does the daily activities at his site, as well as his maintenance supervisor, Daniel Avila. I've known Chachi for years. I hired Chachi in 2007. He was a great hire. He still is a great hire. He is currently working at Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority, of course, at Scatter Sites, where he's managed by Mr. Exley and Mr. Avila. He is going to leave us Unfortunately, I cried when he told me that, and I gave him a hug next Thursday, July the 25th. What I want to say to you before tears come out my eyeballs is that we love you, and we're going to miss you, and we thank you for your 17 years of dedication and service to the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority, Jesus Belastegui, a.k.a. Chachi. Here you go. Thank you so much, Jay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That's beautiful. Very appreciative. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't you stand right here and get the commissioners in the background. Thank you so much. You know, keeping uh, keeping in the spirit of of uh, June's comment about a village. I think you know we all know that. The Housing Authority provides more than just shelter and housing for those we serve. And a lot of what we attempt to do in not only changing building community but changing lives um, cannot be done without partners. And so the next part of my report, I'd like to have Paula Tucker come up and introduce our partners from the uh, Boy Scouts of America. 
Good afternoon, commissioners. I would like to introduce um, let me get my notes. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, from Boy Scouts of America, Mr. Cesar Martinez. He is the outreach manager or outreach director, I'm sorry, for the area. And he has established um, a Boy Scouts troop at, and you'll see the pictures on the screen, at the Sherman Gardens Annex. And it's been uh, really successful. And we're looking to uh, move it further to another property. And our next property is, is going to be Landsman Gardens. But I'm going to let him, and he's got some of his uh, co workers also here, to tell you all about this success. Come on up, guys. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to say, first of all, thank you, Mr. Jordan, uh, Paul Tucker, for having us for the invitation today. Uh, I have Alima with me. She's my right hand uh, on the outreach program, and our CEO, Paul Walter. So uh, I just want to share something right quick. I think uh, besides that we know the word outreach and what it is and then reaching out to the community, this is probably our best unit that, that, that we started. So I want to thank you guys so much for the collaboration because uh, uh, we're truly making an impact. Uh, it wasn't easy at the beginning, to be honest. It was really tough for us to come out and recruit. Uh, and it started really slow, but uh, I mean, Alima put a lot of effort coming out and, and uh, talking to the families, the parents and the kids. And uh, just, just very transparent here, like it is amazing what we're doing with this, with these kids, and obviously we love the opportunity for us to expand uh, and making a positive uh, difference in the community. So Alim is going to share uh, a few things about our program here with the Unit 216. Good day. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'm just blessed, as um, was mentioned prior both times. It does take a village, and so. I've just used that uh, momentum to, to get into some of the communities that need it the most. Um, I've basically developed a program to meet them where they are. Um, and it was a little difficult because they weren't receptive at first. But once they saw that we were consistent, um, we provided them with um, some household items, a lot of donations that we receive. We've definitely shared that with them. Um, and um, the, the most touching moment, a uh, few of them, one is we started a troop. So we have Cubs here, but we also started a boys troop, which is uh, the, um, the older um, boys who sometimes tend to be a little bit more uh, reserved and, and, you know, in their own lane. But they actually have been extremely helpful. Um, we've done a couple of community service projects, and that was cleaning up their community. Uh, now they're more mindful about where they live. And although the, the, the environment that they live in, um, it may be difficult to be positive, we're basically just implementing that to be, to be a good positive role model in your community and for your family. And I think that it's been uh, extremely impactful. Um, they love wearing their shirts. They, they love to be a part of a group that's positive, And that's what just makes my heart smile the most. Um, and the parents, they're now receptive. And they're very extremely grateful for um, this opportunity to have a learning experience outside of the schools and directly in their community uh, so they don't have to have transportation and they don't have any excuses to not participate. So I'm just thankful and I'm, and I'm glad that I have this chance and space to share with you what we're doing in these communities. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Director, commissioners, I, I just want to say thank you. My name is Todd Walter. I'm the CEO of the Boy Scouts here in Las Vegas. I've been here since 2020. I started two weeks after COVID started. And our whole program has been about getting, uh, moving from after school outreach programs where kids are in a real safe environment and a structured environment to community based programs. Uh, your director happens to be a former scoutmaster from Chicago, so I'm really grateful that we have this connection and we also he understands how we work and how we operate. But I look at, like I said, these after-school programs, they're already in a safe environment. Where we need to be is in the community, in the evenings, on the weekends, and that's why this, this program is so important to me. Uh, Commissioner Blackman, I just also moved from Ohio and I served Akron as a part of that, so welcome. Thank you for all you allow us to do. Thank you. Thank you. And I just wanted to state for the record, as much as we as a staff try and make these connections, uh, the board plays such a significant role. You know, the, uh, my reintroduction to Boy Scouts here in town was as a result of a, a, a conversation that Commissioner Bruni and I had, where these guys had reached out to the commissioner 
um, and she reached out to me. And so, uh, again, that that synergy and that communication, you know, as much as we try and, and, and get it all, we, we need your help in connecting us with your connections so that we can better serve our residents. Thank you. I'm going to bring Paula back up. Um, you know, this has been a, uh, a tremendous week, or last seven days, if you will, of uh, us and money. I would just say it like that. And a, uh, Paula will speak about another pot of money that we, we went after, competitively um, searched, and were able to receive. Am I doing Jobs Plus now? Oh, the home buyer. Okay, so Paula, before you talk about that money, you can talk about how we can spend money with okay. the home buyer expo. Thank you, Jessica. So, okay, so on June 29th, um, we held our home annual home buyer expo. We do that in collaboration with Commissioner Tick Siegelblum. I think we have a couple of pictures um, that we took. Um, it was a great success. And so we had over 125 families that attended, and each family had an, um, an average of three adults in attendance, so about 375 people actually attended and walked through the event. We had eight, about 18 vendors, um, anything everywhere from, we had the credit unions there, we had mortgage companies, we had, um, uh, NACA was there, Habitat for Humanity, but we actually had some of the big name banks and they usually did, don't come. So we had Chase Bank, Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank, Bank of America, and usually they don't want to come to events when it's, you know, our people, but they were all there in force. So, um, they, you know, insurance companies um, that were there um, and we actually surveyed, they were actually approving people um, and, and um, uh, counseling people on home ownership. And so we did a survey with some of the people on the way out. Some of the families agreed to talk to us. 44 families were there, were interested in purchasing a home. Um, 27 of them were, had been looking for uh, less than a year. Uh, over um, eight of them had lived for over five years. 27 families, because we had um, marketed this to the public, but 27 of those families were SNAR residents. And um, only four were pre-approved for home ownership. So hopefully many of them connected to those resources inside of the event. And we will hear more about um, their successes, you know, down the road. So we'll stay connected with them. And from last year until this year, we did have nine homeowners from the last one until this year. And I would say in this market, um, with the average home being over 400000 that's a huge success. So thank you very much. So thank you, thank you so much, Paul. Obviously, this was part of me, so I, I want to brag about it, but it, truthfully, it was a great event, and I was just amazed at how much resources are out there. Some of the, the programs have like up to $40,000 for down payment fee, so there's lots of things available, so we've got to keep pushing that, but thank you so much. You're welcome. Very good. Okay, and Paula, why don't you continue to talk about the uh, Job Plus, please? Okay, so last week, we were um, notified that we did receive our um, Jobs Plus grant that we had submitted back in September. And so we were awarded $3 million um, over four years, and we are very excited about that. Um, we wrote that grant specifically to serve the com our communities in uh, the Marble Manor, all of the Sherman Gardens properties, which include Sherman Gardens Annex, Sherman Gardens, Villa Capri, and Marble Manor Annex, as well as Jones Gardens. Um, that the uh, we wrote that grant with a in collaboration with uh, Nevada Workforce Connections, and uh, it, there's a, a three components to it. Uh, of course, it's employment, and then there's a financial incentive, and then also um, community support for work. So the biggest incentive is um, when they join the program from the beginning. There's a 100 percent. Um, income disregard so we don't count any of their income towards rent as long as they're enrolled in the program and they're working with us and our goal is to get them what we, we deemed as job ready so we help them to eliminate all of the barriers they have to employment um, we work with them as far as financial literacy and, and uh, credit and budgeting just like we do in family self-sufficiency and then once we deem, deem them as being job ready then we will hand them off to our employee and V partner uh, to get them enrolled in training and employment so we think this is going to be a huge success and it will work hand in hand with our next grant that um, Mr. Jordan is going to talk about so I, we're very excited about that and cannot wait to get started so thank, thank you. you very much so you turn it back you, over to me. You're welcome. <laughs> um, I want to first of all thank those commissioners who were able to accompany us yesterday in a uh, 
a, a press conference with the um, acting secretary of HUD. You know, I know we all would have wanted to be there, but I think that we all know that DC sometimes sets a schedule, and they set it. We have to adhere to it because of the uh, timing. Um, but I, I would think that the commissioners would, would agree. Um, yesterday was probably, if not, one of the most significant days in my career as a, uh, as a housing provider, if you will. Uh, for the sake of the audience, over the last couple of years, we've been talking about this, um, this, this revitalization tool that the federal government makes available called Choice Neighborhood Initiative. And the Choice Neighborhood Initiative not only looks at the, the brick and mortar of where one lives, it also looks at changing the quality of life as well as the neighborhood. Um, for the last few years, HUD has put together something called the Choice Neighborhood Initiative Grant. Um, this grant will, it's a very, very competitive grant. Um, uh, housing authorities will apply. And uh, this year, we had there were nine finalists. I'm not sure how many actually applied. 32. There were, thir thank you, 32 housing authorities around the country applied. Uh, nine were chosen as finalists, and there were six awards that were given out. And um, yesterday, the uh, acting secretary of HUD came in to uh, make a presentation. And as, as shown on the screen, but I'll, I'll actually unveil it here. I can have Savannah Cappy. <laughs> the, um, the, the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority, in conjunction with the city of Las Vegas, was awarded $50 million to revitalize Marble Manor and the uh, historic West Side um, as a part of the, the 100 plan. And I, again, I, I can't tell you how, how proud and how pleased I am. And I'll, I'll, I'll mimic some of the comments I made yesterday. This is a team effort. You know, we did, there's, there's another part of this called the CNI um, planning grant. And a few years ago, we were able to receive a planning grant. It was $700,000, $600,000. And it allowed us as a community to start sitting down and saying, what does a revitalized Marble Manor, you know, uh, historic West Side look like? And um, the normal playbook, if you will, you get a planning grant, you submit it to HUD, they kind of go back and forth with you, and then if there's a implementation grant a year later, that's when you apply. Well, the team felt so strongly about our planning grant, I can remember, you know, talking to the chair, um, talking to the vice chair. In fact, if I remember, Commissioner Sagerbloom said, well, how much will it cost to apply? And I said, eh, maybe 100, 150,000. He said, so 150 will get us 50 million? Why are you even asking me that? And so if, if I could paraphrase your words. And so we, we said we're going to go after it. And again, through some very, very hard, hard work, heavy lifting, with the team, with the residents. Um, Lutheran uh, Social Services is our people partner. The city of Las Vegas is the co-applicant. But I, I'm, I'm just very, very pleased to announce that we received this $50 million. And so now the work begins. You know, the uh, HUD on DC will assign a CNI team to us. We'll give the board periodic updates, but they're gonna come back out visit. Uh, I, I, I was remiss and, and after we made the uh, application, they actually came out and visited us. It was on May 14th. I remember it was my birthday. I wore the same suit and uh, I was very, very excited. And that was the, 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 the determining factor. After they visited us, they came back, they made the decision. Uh, I had a chance to talk to the director of CNI and uh, she said she was very impressed with how we assembled the leadership team, how people came together and, uh, and showed a commitment, as well as our ability to work with our residents. So, uh, so we're excited. And um, you know, again, I, uh, having done this work for a while, I, I hope this is the first of a many. You know, as uh, comments made yesterday, 
by Councilman Creer. He's like, okay, let's get this one done and let's move over to Sherman and do another one. And so uh, very, very pleased to say that we're in a good place. Uh, we should all be proud that, you know, we positioned ourselves to really, really make a difference in the, in the Marble Manor community. So thank you. And Thank you. I, and just uh, for the record, I want to make sure that everyone realizes that it's a White House and a HUD that's also supportive of this. So this is very important for us as a team nationally and locally. And thank you for all putting it together. Absolutely. Thank you for saying that because it is. It's, uh, as mentioned, uh, it's a part of the president's overall initiative to rebuild community. And, um, and I'll, I'll say it again, like I said yesterday. Everybody doesn't get this opportunity. So we really, really need to feel special. Thank you. And then I'll conclude my report with um, the, um, the newsletter. I hope you guys, I hope people take a look at this. I, I'm all, always amazed at how much stuff we get done. And we don't do repeat. So everything that's in this month is something that happened between the board meetings. And I, again, I'm proud of the work that the staff is doing. I'm proud of the collaboration we have with our, our residents and our resident councils. And uh, clearly, I want to be very clear, there's more to do. You know, we come in these meetings and we talk about the highlights and, and, and there's more to do. We're going to continue to find ways to improve communications, you know, com improve you know, our abilities to work with one another. But this is just a, you know, a, a, a thumbnail sketch of some of the great things that we're doing here at the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. Great. And I apologize. Commissioner Cox wanted to make a comment. I just wanted to say that um, when I attended yesterday, I just felt a great deal of healthy pride for the efforts and all that has been done by staff, by our director, and by our commission. I just have to tell you all that this was such a huge deal. And to be able to stand there um, with the secretary and with the team and know how hard you all worked to get there gave me just, like I said, this feeling of pride and, and, and ownership of a process that allows families to be able to have homes and individuals to be able to have homes this is not a little thing that is being done. This is helping people to be able to remain together as families and to be able to have what they need. So thank you, thank you. I really appreciate all you do. Thank you. Thank you. I, I would, sir, sure, Mr. Disman have, Mr. Disman have a comment? Nope. Uh, but Nancy, uh, they, they flash. I don't know if that that means or not. But repeat that. Hearing. Oh. No. Hello. We can hear you, Commissioner. Oh, I'm just always oh, hello. No, I think uh, having dealt with so many government grants and projects. Throughout my life, I'm just so proud to be a part of our commission and, and to watch the way the team makes a commitment of what they're going to do and just goes after it. It's very, very impressive, but the most important aspect of it is, is the ultimate effect. Who it serves, who it helps, and that just brings joy because that's the whole purpose and that we're involved as a commission, I personally involved in, in, in a commission like this that's really sincerely committed to helping the people we serve. That's impressive to watch these things come together. And I want to say, uh, Director Jordan, uh, you just, uh, uh, just stop me every time I watch you roll. It's very, very brilliant the way you access the staff, you access the community, and you personally make it a point that everybody has a voice to the this. Congratulations to your whole group and to our project. Thank you very much for this help. Thank you, Commissioner. 
Yes, Commissioner yes. Turner. Um, I I am so overwhelmed because um, when he first came on board and we received the director, he hit the ground running. So, um, and I know it was a lot of challenges, and um, he's met them. And I know it's more to come, but I, I also want to make sure that the residents and the community know that um, that it's our community to pour back into to sow those seeds and to make it the best it can be in our time. And um, such a gift is to be cherished and appreciated. And I want to do whatever I can do with the residents and um, the support of the community to ensure that we have health, safety, welfare, we have housing, and we'll continue to appreciate what we're going to you know, have in the future. Thank you so much. Mr. Bruni, would you want to make a comment? Oh, I guess not. All right, Mr. Jordan. In conclusion of my report, I wanted to yield some of my time to um, Commissioners Turner and Brown to see if they wanted to give some reflections on your recent trip with uh, Nauro to Chicago and just kind of share with the audience what, what you learned from it. Um, it was a great experience, especially for it to be my first um, conference uh, for the housing symposium. I did learn a lot about what uh, Chicago was doing um, with their um, systems and how they're able to utilize that to minimize some of the barriers they have. And so just to be uh, there present and to get that learning experience was, um, it was great. So I'm looking forward to the next one. Absolutely. I was impressed in how they um, revitalized the community. One great highlight for me is that there um, is going to be an opening for the Public Housing Museum, and they want to uh, encapsulate the stories of public housing residents. So if you have something incredible to share, um, they're going to be moving across the country and encapsulating that the thoughts and the, the visions that public residents, um, housing residents have and towards their future. But uh, I thought that was very impressive how they're utilizing um, their space and, and what they're doing um, collectively. They had a library that was right there. The residents could take advantage of that because they had housing right next to it. Um, another um, thing that I did discover, is, and, and, and in fact, you said it, that they have so many people to have 40,000 vouchers and we only had 12 and yesterday it was um Horsford that mentioned that he's going after those extra vouchers that we need because it's hard to house so many people and um on very little bit of vouchers um the the most uh, important thing is that we get the inventory so we're doing that and we have properties coming online as we you know as we push forward and I'm just thankful that we have a, a great director at the helm. Thank you so much. And we got to see some of your work there too. So I wanna I wanted to really um say, you know, he knows his business because we see it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner or Mr. Chair, that concludes my report. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the next thing we All right, looks do. like um we're going to have, uh, one, do we do the consent agenda yeah, first? The consent agenda item six, the write offs, that's okay. a uh, consent agenda item. All right. There's a, uh, I'm looking for a motion for the consent agenda for the write offs. Motion to approve consent agenda. Second. All right. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. That motion passes. All right, Mr. If we can, I'd like to ask for a moment of silence to recognize those residents who've, uh, who've passed on since our last meeting, and I'll read the list. Uh, Stephen Bailey, Juanita Brown, Ishmael Cardina, Willie Chappelle, Peter Kristoff, Helen Elliott, Wilbur Ellis, Yvonne Etter, Dudley Haggy, Kayla Harris, Rosa Hernandez, Cecilia James, Kenneth Lowry, Gregory Moore, Jerry Neal, 
Eula Sims, the third, Tyler Smith, the third, Victoria Smith Ashby, Gary Sordano, Philip Thomas, and Martin Valentini. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so item five would be the taking items for discussion and possible action. So the first item, we're gonna have Frank Stafford from Development and Modernization present uh, item eight. Good afternoon, Commissioners. <clears throat> Frank Stafford, Director of Development and Modernization. Uh, item eight is for the uh, item eight is for the approval acceptance of nomination for three SNRHA buildings. Background on this item: According to our recently updated building naming protocol, the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority is responsible for naming buildings based on specified criteria. The submission deadline for this uh, for this naming is Thursday, August first, two thousand twenty-four, by six p.m. The three developments are located at 28th and Sunrise, Duncan and Edwards, and the former Rose Gardens parcel. The SNR naming protocol includes engaging the community and honoring individuals or entities that have made significant contributions. The criteria for the names can be found in your backup documentation, uh, which was presented at the uh, June board meeting for approval. The uh, Housing Authority will have a link up on its website. Uh, with the uh, the criteria for the naming, uh, the name information is application. So the action request is the executive director requests the board to approve accepting nominations for the naming of three SNRHA buildings located at Duncan and Edwards, 28th and Sunrise, and the former Rose Gardens. Is there a motion? We need a motion to approve it. <clears throat> we need a motion? Yes. That's what it says. I'll be happy to make a motion. I need a motion. Okay. okay second. Then motion and second. Move. All in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? That motion passes. Thank you. The next item, commissioners, will be report, um, presented by our human resource manager, June Fleming. This is authorized in negotiation and execution of broker services with door and insurance for employee benefits. Joan. Good afternoon, commissioner. My name is June Fleming. I'm the human resources manager. I have with me Naomi uh, Dinsmore, uh, who is also a uh, representative of door insurance. Uh, the background on this uh, background is based on the ongoing need for uh, above stated insurance services. The Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority solicited and accepted proposals RFP number P25000 in accordance with this procurement policy. A total of 737 form firms received RFP documents. 17 firms actually downloaded the solicitation and two firms submitted responsive uh, proposals prior to the submittal deadlines. As a result of the evaluations conducted, the top rated proposer was determined to be Door Show Insurance Inc. for these broker services and background checks were performed. It should be noted that uh, the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority does not specifically pay Door Show Insurance for these services. They are commissioned by their carriers. Door Show is aware of the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority Section 3 program, is willing to comply with Section 3 should any positions become available. A source of funds for its programs and services are eligible expenditures. Door Show is a 100% woman-owned company, and the owner is Robin Door Show. A representative from Door Show will be available who, uh, to answer any questions that you may have. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Uh, if you want to just, I'm sorry, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I'm going to let you speak, and then I'll ask well, a question I'm, I'm, I'm always necessary. last, so you go first. <laughs> And on behalf of Robin DeRosho and John DeRosho and the company, we want to thank you for the opportunity to 
and trust us to provide services for all the employees for Southern Nevada. And we are pleased and happy to keep providing those benefits, our services for everyone here. Thank you. Have we used this company before? Uh, yes, ma'am, we have. Okay. Uh, we are um, familiar with Door Show. Door Show is uh, one of the renowned bold, uh, main brokers in uh, uh, Southern Nevada. Okay. And it's fairly reasonable for the employees as far as having to pay into the medical and dental and life? We have been fortunate within the last couple of years we've had rate locks, okay. meaning that the insurance did not go up. Sounds good to me. This will provide a more robust benefit package for our employees. They're going to do a lot of work, so they're going to need some good benefits. We're doing a lot of work. <laughs> we are anticipating uh, to have um, some form of bids or quotes from our insurance carriers so that we can go ahead and select what is best um, for the employers as well as this agency. Yes, thank you. It's just been in my um, observation that the better the employees feel about doing the work, the more work gets done. It's kind of like happy wife, happy life. Yeah. <laughs> the action requested, the executive director requests the board to authorize the execution of a contract with Door Show Insurance to provide broker services to garner group medical, life, workers' compensation, and supplemental insurance for Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority for initial year up to a five-year period based on Sonara's loss runs and other payroll changes. Motion to approve. Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. That motion passes. And I like the fact you're 100% women-owned, so that's very exciting. Thank you. The next item, Commissioner, we're going to have uh, Rosie Lane Garcia, the director of HCV, come up and present. This is on a, uh, a contract increase. Good afternoon, Commissioners. This is Rosa Elaine Garcia, Housing uh, Programs Director. And um, right now I'm here to request the board to review and approve the increased contract for Viatron uh, for document scanning services for the Housing Choice Voucher Department in the amount of $130,000. Um, $130, more. So Viatron has provided, oh, we have already, um, and this is $130,000 uh, that is already in the budget and it has already been approved, the uh, uh, budget. So it's to increase the contract so we can complete our scanning project. We have already uh, provided to Viatron over almost 500 boxes and we have 400 more to go and that will complete our project. And this would allow staff to have more time to spend with clients rather than paper and filing. So, um, is there any questions? Uh, something was brought to my attention about, um, I guess the IMS, the PIC, um, the transition that's coming, that's coming blackout, or you know, you guys probably know more about that than I do. The pick. Um, however, is this preparing us for that time when all of our files and everything will be, you know, online? Uh, definitely, it will prepare us to keep better data, be better, uh, we will give us more time to spend more cleaning our data, preparing for, you know, spending more time with uh, improving our services. Um, and definitely our reporting to HUD. Yes, so this yeah. will help us minimize our errors and everything. Absolutely that Thank too. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Motion to approve. There's a motion. There's a second. There's a motion and a second. Second. Cast your vote. Aye. Aye. Any negatives? Aye. Aye. No, no negatives. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. So, are we on to, to um, new business? All right, does anyone have any new business? All right, if you no business, we'll uh, uh, move on to the last period for public discussion. 
This is your last chance to make a public comment. I have several cards here. Anyone who wants to speak, um, feel free to come up to the microphone. Do we get three minutes or two minutes or three minutes? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm not sure if it's my good luck or, or what's going on, but no one wants to speak today. Well, you can just read the name off the card and invite people. Oh, okay. I can invite them up. Okay. So Edith Keating. Good morning, everyone. Yes, morning. I'm Edith Keating, Vice President of Harry Levy Gardens, Resident Council. Um, my comment was that money, is it going to be used to revitalize some of the already, already properties that you have, like Harry Levy Gardens? So, we'll let Mr. Jordan answer that, but we are not allowed to to respond in public comment, but we can certainly answer the question afterwards. So ma'am, this is a grant specifically for Marble Manor and the historic West Side. So mm -hmm. the, these dollars are for that. Not to say that there's not up our other opportunities for us to ad find additional dollars and continue to work with Levy Gardens, but this is specifically for Marble Manor and the, uh, the 100 plan. Okay, thank you. Madeline Rhodes. Madeline Rhodes, 914 West McWilliams Avenue. Um, today, hello, good afternoon. Um, I'm here today because there are some issues that are continuing to take place. I've been here several times. I've attempted to communicate with the commissioner's board. I've attempted to talk and speak with the um, executive staff as well. In 2022, um, excuse me, in 2020, I was deemed disabled by my physician and my doctor. And at that time, I submitted a paperwork which also goes by and according to the housing authority's definition of disabled, which my doctor checked off on and signed in in 2020. It wasn't until in 2024 that I found out rather in, um, in November 2023, uh, no, I take that back, in 2024 of February, that I actually discovered and found out that at no point in time had disability been applied to my account. On, on according to the APOC, the 2022 A, the ACOP that the Housing Authority has, um, elderly and disabled allowance of $400 per household whose head of household is or spouse is disabled. And that has yet to be applied to my account since 2020. I've been trying to get this corrected and, and, and put into proper standings and it has yet to be done. Also, phantom income that I never received it's also being calculated inside of a uh, rent uh, rent repayment, which I have been contesting for a while. I've come up and I was supposed to be having my um, my hearing, and I asked for a for an appeal, and I was denied that appeal process. At that time as well, I would have been able to present my information, my my findings, the facts of the matter, as well as the findings that Housing Authority and HUD. Um, permits to go forward and I look forward to being able to speak with somebody to expeditiously rectify this situation as this is a form of um, disability discrimination as I have already spoken to the Equal Rights Commissioners Board and they said I am being discriminated against by the Housing Authority. So I am asking for a resolve to the situation sooner than later because now I have incurred a 30 day notice on my door. And so now I'm trying to make sure this is rectified the proper way. And I would like to speak to staff to get this rectified expeditiously. Um, because other than that, they're advising me to go to legal. And I'm saying they, I'm saying regional, is telling me to go to legal and they're telling me to go to the news. And I'm trying to be as peaceful as possible through this process, but I am being treated unfairly and unjust and many residents who are also, who do not know about the disability credit because we were never informed of it. Part of the regulations, we are supposed to be informed and we were not. Thank you. Mr. Jordan, so someone can talk to her? Yes, there is. All right, so if you'll stick around, we'll have somebody talk to you. All right, Natasha Smith.
Hello, everybody. Um, I do. I want to start off by saying I do appreciate everything that you guys have done. Um, I did bring this situation up in, I think, believe 2022 board meeting. Um, I am one of many which have been mis uh, displaced in um, the situation that was going on in the amounts that were old that was no understanding behind it. Um, there were a manager that was taken off property in handcuffs due to this situation in 2023 that was taking monies, money orders and cash number, whatever she was doing with it. Um, so we were getting fake 30 days or so on and so on. But um, yes, I did eventually uh, last month, uh, I was evicted out of my apartment because I have been fighting it for like two years, going back and forth, back and forth. It was unsettled and everything. But I just did want to, I just wanted to bring it to the attention that that is going on. And, um, from my understanding, excuse me, from my understanding, it is uh, like 40 other people that this happened to. Um, I did speak with the recent um, caseworker, and she did, you know, advise me on certain things or how to go through the process of trying to get everything situated. But yeah, I, that's all I have to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, can we have your name for the record? Uh, Smith. Thank you. Thank you. What, they, which property are you yeah. at, Ms. Smith? Um, well, I'm no longer there, but it's Lansing. Right. Thank you. So someone will speak to her after the meeting. Okay. David Gomez. I don't have any other cards, so um, I guess we'll close the meeting and uh, meeting's adjourned. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.